Happy Friday. Hello. Welcome to Simply Scrappy. Let me know if you can see me. It's been a few weeks since we have had all of this all connected. So um, give me a hello in the comments if you can see it and we will get started. I am a couple minutes late. I realized I had to pull out some of my supplies. I was at a weekend retreat this weekend. So a lot of my stuff was still packed up. So today we are going to work on um, a couple of projects. Um, I have simple page kit number five um, from Creative Memories. And then as a bonus, we're also going to work on the green goodness uh, simple page kit. This was one that was available as part of a promo for Earth Day. Um, you were able to earn it free. If you did not earn it free, I do have some available for sale on my website, teslascrapbooks.com in the shop there so you can grab one if you missed it then and of course we're going to put the kit together and then we are going to hack the design and recreate it with the same measurements so it looks like you guys can find me so hello it's good to see you glad to see all of you so it has been life has just been like some of the busiest um this month so I have been in uh, spring break. I went to see Megan, although she left, I was in Seattle. And then I came home for a few days and I went to Mexico on the Creative Memories incentive trip. And then I came home for a few days and then I went to Campbell's soccer slash basketball tournament in Ohio. Um, probably down there by you, Christy. We were on the north side of Cincinnati. Oh, that's west. Never mind. Not east. Southwest Cincinnati. And then I came home for a few days and had to get packed up and ready for my retreat, which was here in Indianapolis. And then I, this week, I've been taking a deep breath and getting everything pulled together. And I thought this would be an easy way to get back into um, simply scrapping. Um, it might be, I don't know what the frame rate, it's only the frame rate is kind of low. It may be a little bit of a poor stream. And I'm not totally sure how to fix that, especially live in the moment. Um, I have fiber Wi-Fi, so I'm not sure why it would not stream as fast as possible. Um, no one, there's no kids here to game or anything like that. So um, we will see if I can flip down. We'll look at the kit. So I haven't even put this together yet. So those of you that follow No Creative Memories is putting out uh, this life simple page kit every month and so they're saying number five although they usually do correspond to the month um and this one is does how it can be a mother's day thing we should say happy mother's day is one of the stickers although you could skip it and um or it could be spring themed or whatever you want it to be themed and then we're going to make that one again and this is what the green goodness looks like. I keep wanting to say green goddess. <laughs> That's the salad dressing, not the kit. Green goodness. Huh? I put it on the website. It's not. <laughs> Angie said she put it on the website. It's green goddess. So you might have to search both ways, although we'll update it. <laughs> she fixed it, she said. So it does say goodness now. Um, the earth is a goddess, though, right? So then we're going to do that one. And then I'm going to hack him. So coming up this weekend, uh, my son graduates from IU Bloomington. And we're very excited about that. It has been quite the journey for him. And so I'm going to prep some layouts using the graduation collection um, that I'm going to use the hack these with. So that's what we're going to be working on Mother's Day the earth and then I'm going to use graduation papers to put them together so um, all of this will show up on my blog post so if you are just following along um, the blog post will have the video and I will upload the, upload the cutting guide and kind of review and refresh um, what I've done so uh, you can always grab a pencil if you want we'll go over what the measurements of these are when we hack it um, it is a little challenging sometimes when we hack it because we'll have to pull out multiple papers, but we'll get to that point later. So for the sample page kit, you just have to have your trimmer because we have our two base papers. We have the sheet of sticker and then we have this sheet that we're going to cut apart and we're going to get the pieces to lay it all out. 
So on the back of this, it is numbered. Um, five, seven, six, and eight, you can probably identify, are four by six. One and two are four by four. And then three and four are uh, two by four. So I'm going to grab my trimmer and I'm just going to use my straight blade to cut these apart. I actually lost my straight blade last time I was on here. I don't know what we were doing, maybe power hour. I pulled out my straight blade to try the new blades and I never could find it. I got lost in the oblivion of my desk. So I have a new straight blade, which I have not changed in a few years now. They rarely need change. You usually just have to keep up with cutting your, or replacing your trimmer mount. So I'm cutting these apart. So again, these are four by four. These are two by four. And then the rest of these are four by six. Line up on that dotted line. You can flip it over. So one challenge is, you know, with these, because we are cutting apart different pieces of paper, Sometimes you might get a little bit of an edge of the other print. Sometimes it hasn't mattered on layouts and sometimes you do see it. I think these are gonna show. So you might have to give yourself just a little cleanup trim. If you weren't exactly down the center of the line on the back, which is a little wider than our blade actually cuts. This one, I still see that blue, the blue off. There we go. I have all those pieces. My edges look pretty good. This one, slight bit of blue. And then we can lay these out and put them together. This part's pretty simple. It's the decorating is done for us on the simple kits. All they have us do is lay out these mats for photos. Of course, if your photos don't line up exactly, you can either trim your photos down to fit or you can just overlap with the papers. You can wait to adhere these if you wanna make sure that your photos work. But this is just a simple um, grid design. But as I'm looking up here, um, where do they incorporate the stickers? They do have the border stickers. They have the leaves that go down there along the bottom. I could go ahead and put those down. And they are not going to be in the way of the mats. So I can go ahead and adhere them. So I can decide if I want my leaves to point up or point down. I'm going to go with up because that's the way the butterflies seem to be sitting. I have really enjoyed the emergence of spring. Although we got pretty warm yesterday. We got up to 86. Like, I'm not ready for that yet. I don't want summer to be here yet. We like spring to hang out for a while. I feel like I've only had like one soccer game that my toes and fingers didn't go numb. And the last one was kind of hot. I'm like, where's the in between? Just want to be comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and hear these down into their spots so they will be ready. So if I do want to use this for Mother's Day, usually I take some photos of my mom or the kids. I'm not even sure what our plans are this year. So I can make sure I take all the photos. I can just take, you know, the horizontal and vertical. And then I'll have a selection to choose from when I go to print. This layout, I want two nice horizontals couple vertical and then a couple that I can trim down to a square. This one is cute, this little square. They did the little um, little scallop inside, but we'll have fun recreating that. 
We then move here. Our surprise here with the blue. I'm just going to, I'm sitting these kind of side by side to make sure I maintain the line this way. Let's do this one. Thanks, Judy. I'm glad that you missed me. I, it's funny, I look back over the last few years, what a whirlwind, and I have so many photos from the last month. I gotta, I gotta find some realistic strategy of how I'm going to keep up with this scrapbooking. I told you before, I live life faster than I can scrapbook it. Someday I know I'll be empty nester and maybe I'll have a little more time. So that is done with that. And so then they show the Mother's Day. I'll go ahead and commit. I'm going to commit to Mother's Day. So I'll put this one up here, which is pretty because it coordinates with the white down here. So happy Mother's Day there. And then a lot of their photos, and not the photos, the stickers are kind of created this collage down the left side of the photo, some of them overlapping. So I don't want to commit to that yet. Um, they overlap stickers there, even if you don't like to do that. Um, you might want to wait until you journal. And um, they create a little sticker collage over here, which is pretty. I probably could go ahead and create that. I'll set one out here to the side. It looks like a little butterfly. And then um, I could say in the garden, or I could say love grows here. I'll do love grows here. My, although my parents do usually have quite a bit of plants. And then the rest of them I'll save. So if you don't want to do Mother's Day, you could do spring is in the air up here and make that. A spring layout. Um, it's so warm here. I just told um, my neighbor and I were talking about plants. I think we're past the frost here. Looking at the 10 day forecast, I don't think we're going to get frost. So we could go ahead and plant. Usually we have to wait until after Mother's Day. But that's that one. So pretty basic. So now we have to work on hacking it. Um, before we hack it, actually, I think I'm going to put the other one together and then come back to this one because I'm going to use the same papers hacking both ways. I'm trying to decide what would be easier. I suppose for video's sake, for anyone that wants to watch one and not the other, I should go ahead and hack it and then I'll, I'll figure the rest part out. So to hack it is this one's a little challenging because they've used so many papers. So they have the base paper. They have a large 11 by 9 piece here, and then they just have strips. So the strips are easy to pull in a print, but I knew, need two dominant papers. And I decided I wanted to use, like I said, the graduation set. I have a whole stack of papers. This gets a little challenging. So You Graduated is a set that they just came out with. So lots of embellishments. I know I will love those. There's some foiling on there. We have a sticker sheet, which I do like um, a little bit better than last year's. The yellow is not quite so neon. It's a little bit more gold. Um, but I think I'm actually going to try to focus on the black and the white and the gray. So I use colors are red and white. He is not walking the actual graduation ceremony or the, the whole school one where they do cap and gown. He didn't want to do any of it, and we compromised. He was, he gave me the mommy's favor, and he's going to do the business school um, ceremony, which is in the morning. So that is just business casual. They want not being a cap and gown. So I'm not even sure how much red I will have. And so I was debating whether to pull in a little bit of red or, or just not. But I didn't want to go too gold heavy. And I was trying to narrow down. Okay, what I want to use, and if I didn't find everything I wanted to use in this, you graduated paper pack. It's just six sheets. I have six choices. I also have the This Life black and white pack that just came out. So I'll have some options in here. And then I also have the silver and gold collection, which I love. Um, I was kind of going through to see what I had that I hadn't used. I've used this quite a bit in some of the other graduations. I have a couple of prints down here that would work. And so as I looked for what's in um, the You Graduated, I know I don't want to use the yellow. And I don't think I want to use the comp um, 
print. I feel like that's just not really reflective of the college graduation day. So I'm not going to use these. So it leaves me um, the graduation caps, um, which I could use a little bit. This is kind of an odd print. They they did upside down and right side up. So you had two ways that you can lay it out and see the caps. I feel like the way they did this is a little bit makes it hard to realize their grad caps. I mean, you know the grad caps. I just don't love it. But it does give you a little taste of the grad caps. Um, I also have the punch. So there was the cap. I can't want to say cap and gown. You guys remember that collection, the graduation one? A few years ago. This one is diploma, cap and diploma, right? Cap and diploma punch. Um, so that would work in well with that one. And I do like these grays. A lot of times um, schools that have white have used gray kind of in their away or uniforms, um, sometimes the home ones. I'm okay with a little bit of stars, um, but I didn't want to get too much gold. So we might be using some of this one. And then the stripes, we'll see how that lays out. And then my other choices, I think I'm going to use black cardstock base. So to remind you, let me kind of see this peak up here. I need something for this back right here. And then I'm going to either use a solid cardstock or something very tonal. And this needs to be fairly tonal. And then I can use kind of a statement print. So I have to think about what I want it to pop up there. Uh, I could do the grad caps along the edge, or I could do the stars. Um, and then I, of course, I can bring in other prints, maybe in the mats or something later, or I, that's where maybe where I could use the red. Um, paper selection is just hard sometimes, especially when I don't have the photos yet. But here's the black and white. I do like this one. I like the black with the stars. The back side is white with black. I kind of like that one better than the gold. The zigzags, which, I mean, they are, they do make you dizzy. And when I look through, when I go through paper buffets with um, some customers, people like avoid papers like this because it's so much to look at, but you have to use it in small doses. I love the backside. I love that kind of dark tonal. And of course we have dots. That side's way too bright. Um, I don't know that I need the white, or then you, that's probably, these stripes are probably a bit more than I want. I like those, so that tonal could be the base too. I have to remember that I'm doing um, two layouts, like I said. So if I choose a paper like this, I'd have to either open another pack um, or they would be different. I don't know that I'll have a ton of photos from tomorrow, like I said, since or Saturday. It is tomorrow. Cap and gown. So for, I'm pretty sure two layouts is going to be plenty. Um, we're going to the park afterwards just to do a little bit of picnic. For him. And then it comes with this color, which is like a gray, or it didn't come with it. This is um, probably charcoal. And then I have a platinum, I have the red. And so you can see, I don't love the way this yellow mixes in. So I might take that off the table, just stick with this color scheme. Um, so I can decide, do I want my cap and gown to be the print or the stars? Still not sure about that cap and gown. If I stick with the black cardstock base, that will be simpler. Then I have to have something to put that big sheet, which I was thinking one of the grays. Now I won't use the dots. I do like these, but like I think black cardstock is going to be well enough. Start to narrow down my choices here. This is the stressful part, isn't it? It's like choosing the paper. Always the hardest part. I don't know that I would use this big one, but we're going to set it to the side. It might come back out later. So I'm going to lay this so you can see the opposite side. So what am I choosing here? The mats are a lot of the color in here, but I, I'm i not going to have that much color in the mats. I'm probably just going to stick with one color depending on the photos. So I'm really choosing just the three. And what if I do the gray? I do the stars. Okay. 
just don't love the grad cups. Or I could put in red. I'm not sure. I want to go with these three. We're just going to see how it goes. So the irony is with this layout, because most of the cutting guide paper were the mats, I don't really need to worry about those. Um, it would just be these little tile bars down here. Um, so my main cuts are going to be these pieces. So like I said, these are um, 11 by 9, this yellow piece, and 1 by 10 for these pieces. So the back of this, this is that comp paper too, which is nice because I will use it up. So I need 11 by 9. That down okay. to 11. And 9. Now I have to find the other sheet. Good thing you can't see the piles. I can save these strips. I mean, if I, I could show you what it looks like with the comp on the other side. I don't think I'm going to like that print, but if you had a double sided one, those one inch strips would work well for those top pieces. I'm going to go ahead and cut the graduation so you can, the cap, so you can see what it looks like. So I said these are 1 by 10. I'm just going to cut 1. The challenge is, is 1 inch. I want to try to get three full layers of caps. So I'm going to cut off just a little bit of that white on the edge. And then I think I can get three rows of the caps. Yeah, without them being cut off. And I'll cut a piece of this and we'll compare and see how it works. Yeah, you can also, I mean, that's a good point. You can also make your selections based on maybe you want to put punches up there or border stickers. So this is going to be what we'll work on one side. This is going to be pretty centered. It's nine inches. So that's an inch and a half down from the top, an inch and a half on the bottom. And then these are long. I haven't trimmed them yet, but I want to make sure I I know which one. It's a 10 inch strip. But of course, I could make that longer if I think it looks better on the design. I don't know. What do you guys think? It is, a, I know the gray looks really dominant, but remember, it's going to be covered with mats and photos, so it's not going to be quite so light. This is one that may be kind of hard because I don't have the photos. I still like the stars better. That's what the gold would look like. And then there's the white stars too. I almost like white stars better than the, the grad caps. I kind of like the, the, because I am black and it's dark, I kind of like the way it extends. So maybe I would want to cut it longer than 10 inches. Rather than getting the short effect, I could get the long layered effect, more like maybe 11 and a half or so. Gray stars, I'm looking at your comments. White or gold, gray stars. I'm not, I'm definitely not gonna do gold. I'm gonna, if I'm going to have gold, this is going to let it be in the embellishments. So white stars, black stars. Let 
It's going to let it pop up here on the screen. It's slightly delayed. I'm going to go with the stars. So then I could decide, do I want more stars? I could flip the top and bottom to be one white, one black. White from both. It does pop a little bit more against the dark part of stock. And let's decide then, do I want to make this longer than 10 inches? So the 10 inches would be about there. The 11 and a half is there. If I do keep it to the 10 inches that they have, you know, I probably have um, a little bit more embellishment in the corners. Um, I'll stick to the 10 inches. We'll stick to the, the true hack. Sit down. Now, of course, you can save these. I might be able to layer those in and get my black stars in there also. Don't ever throw away those little strips. They're perfect for tucking and little embellishments. Now I need to adhere these, so I'm going to layer it slightly. Like I said, this is about an inch and a half. This you could butt up right against it for... So it would be about half inch from the bottom. If you're not sure you're straight, you could grab your T ruler. You gotta make sure the things out of the way so your T ruler actually will lay flat. Someone commented on my nails. I painted them for Mexico, which was really fun. I had pink. And you, if you watched Power Hour, you know I was joking with Megan that having your nails done, I think, makes you look more legitimate on your videos. <laughs> you have prettier hands. Um, so I did decide to go ahead and have them redone. I did red for graduation. And so after this, I'll decide if I really want to maintain them. I love them, and they're really pretty. But it gets stressful about not messing them up, especially with all of the boxes I deal with. But also that painted tip, it's harder to pick up papers. I suppose you get used to it, but it's like not as thin of a tip. It's harder to get underneath it. Bring that down just a little. I'll probably overlap it slightly. You won't see the edge peeking through. I'm going to flip this around since I can't stand up and see. I got it straight. It's pretty straight. So that's one side, but then I do want to create, you know, what if I wanted those little journal boxes? It would be a two by six and then mats. You know, what color of mats would I want? I feel like the red is going to look so busy without the picture on there. It looks a little heavy. Um, the charcoal kind of pulls together the light gray and the dark gray. So for the sake of making it now, I'm going to use charcoal. I'll see what I actually get photos of. This might change. I'll have to post it whenever I actually get my pictures on here. 
have the two four by six. So this is kind of like following the cutting guide. I'll have the two four by six, the two four by four, and the two four by two. This is the piece I was really after. Now, mine are not going to be pretty like the layouts because on their cutting guide, they had multiple prints on their one piece that they cut up. So you'd have to use different sheets of paper and if you want that effect. But this is how it would lay out on theirs. But what I want to do, the reason why I want to go ahead and cut these, because I wanted to recreate this little box here. So I would use a white based paper or white cardstock. I could potentially throw some grad caps in there. Um, I don't know. Or I could do, you know, a little bit of this white. I'll go ahead and just cut the white polka dot just to see. And so I want to make that scallop edge. So this is a fun part when you can flip over your trimmer and pick out a decorative blade to cut with. And don't forget, we have two new ones. If you've not been paying attention for the last month, we got the pinking and the colonial. Um, do you guys keep yours, do you leave your open spots down here at the bottom like this? Or do you fill one side and then go down the other side? I'm going to have to post that in my group because I am curious. It's hard not to put them on here in rainbow order just because it looks so pretty. Or maybe you put them in alphabetical order. Anyways, the point is we get to pick a blade to choose. So I have a grid. I have some straight lines in the base. And this is going to be a polka dot. So it'd be nice to have a little bit of curve or a postage stamp or something to give me a little bit of curve to it to accent against the straight lines. Um, I think I'll use stamping. It's like not quite maybe as feminine as scallop. So for the stamping, there's I I want that stamping edge to the right, and so I have a T in there, so I know that however I cut this, the cut is going to be to the this side of my paper. So if I want two inches, this is two inches. I want a little less than two inches. Probably want more like one and three fourths. I'm going to have to flip my paper around so that the stamping edge is still on that side. And you could just cut down one little piece of paper once you cut it too. So this is, a, I need it a little bit less than four. Probably about We'll go around um, my right about three and three fourths. So I can always put it down. Yep, that's perfect. So three and three fourths was that. So that gives me kind of that little insert there, then I can embellish. And so then when I want to have fun layer with the stickers, I can use this spot for the quotes or the balloons, or I could pull out so many options. This is a really big embellishment pack. It's a full, full one, but we got a lot in it. If you have any graduates coming your way, this is a good value. Like, we don't usually get so many choices. There's, of course, the banner. Put a banner somewhere. Your future is so bright. Out of you. 
You know, we have these open corners, like I said, that can be filled in. The tassel with the worst the hassle was worth the hassle. That's actually pretty appropriate for him, hopefully. Hopefully someday he sees that. This one is class, so you can use your letter stickers, ceremony. Look how cute these are. There's some good ones in here. The graduate. So the adventure begins. Books. So my layout is really plain in the papers, but I feel like once I get the photos and then embellish it, it will just pop. So the monochromatic look. And this, so it's time to party. That could be good for a little cookout. Not having a grad party, so it is just uh, me and the kids and his dad and step-siblings and my parents that will be at the park. So lots of fun choices in there. So you can see by the time I make my final selections, the simple hack gives me a lot of opportunity to fill in whatever. So... Okay, so let's move on to the next one, and then we'll come back to all of this. <laughs> that was kit five, one side of it at least. So on the green goodness kit, you got a large sticker sheet, and so it is great for gardening, Mother Earth, love my planet, anything springy outside. Are any of you gardeners? Do, do you guys do vegetable gardeners, fruit garden? Not fruit garden. Yes, fruit. I meant flowers. Flowers or fruits or vegetables. And for this kit, it's the same concept. We have two base papers and a paper we are going to cut apart. Use my trimmer. This one, it looks like there's only three pieces, but once you flip it over, you'll see that there are larger pieces. So it's a six inch cut to start. Oh, I just did the mistake. No one reminded me. I didn't put my straight blade back in. Maybe I'll like the scalloped edge. And the reverse, well, it's the reverse stamping edge. I'll leave it and see. I won't cut it straight yet. We'll see. Maybe I'll like the texture. So this is going to be a four by six. And then we have a four, um, four by six, eight by six. Six by two. Six. And we have one inch pieces. And that leaves a four by 10. And again, this will, all, all the measurements will go into my blog. Let's see how this lays out. So this is a photo mat, the large one. They want you to put two photos there. This is also for photos. Then this is for a title or journaling. I am going to have to clean that one up. This one was for a photo. And then we have the two pieces for down here. So these pieces went in here first. right along that bottom edge. Well, it sounds like those of you commenting leave your empty spaces at the bottom. And some of you have extra blades, so you have all of your spaces full. We're going to clean this up. I'm going to give myself that straight edge. The stamping edge doesn't look so great there. And then I have a little bit of color bleed. So 
It's going to be the perfect spot for my polka dot paper that I just used. I'll go ahead and straight edge that because it is the opposite side of the cut. There are two border stickers also that they have, and they have those adhered down here at the bottom, kind of sticking out. So I would want to adhere those next. I'm just going to look on my mat and use... Gonna under overlap it slightly. And it goes all the way end to end. I think that's hard to tell on the handout because the ends are light, kind of an ombre. And this spot is for photos. If my photos don't end up being that big, I would just overlap the paper. Could also do additional mats on top of that. A little header. This one, they have three photos. You'd have to cut them down, or you could do a couple of vertical ones that you cut down. I'm gonna do about an inch. This is about an inch off the edge. This one's about an inch off the edge. One more mat to see this. So I have an option here, you know, they have theirs kind of pushed down, it leaves that green space. Um, you might be inclined to center it. Um, I feel like if you center it, then you have open green down here and there, you know, which one would you want to embellish when you kind of cluster things a little bit closer together. I push it down a little bit. Then I just have that space up there I can decorate. So they had Mother Earth over here. With some land. So it looks like this one. The dirt. And then a flower and a bee. I do love my plants. I have a lot of pots. Like, I, I'd have to go back and look, like, like 30. Oftentimes, between inside, outside, um, that I put out, I just keep buying more pots. And when I was in Cincinnati for the tournament, my parents were very kind. They came over and were doing some cleanup for me in the yard. It did need mowed. It didn't need trimmed. But then my dad went through and emptied all of my pots, like dumped the dirt. And because that's what he does at his house, and he mixes it with mulch and repots it. But some of my pots had had either perennial seeds or like vines that would come back. And so I've been mourning the fact that he touched my pots. I'm like, and then someone was saying like, our winter was so mild here, warm that they, um, oh, I'm going to blank on which snapdragons or snapdragons came back up and that reminded me that some of my snapdragons came back up last year but not this year because they all got dumped so it's a sad moment for me but the opportunity to plant new things so i could take some pictures and put them here on my green goodness layout but now we're going to hack it so we're going to make this again with the graduation so again i need my base paper so this will be black cardstock again i need this piece 
which is, what did I say, 10 by, I write these down. I wrote them down on my phone. So number four is four by six. This one is eight by six. Um, this is a two inch, so six by two, which is one, these are one by 10. And then that leaves four by 10. Whenever I'm doing these, I add up to make sure. So that's one, two, six, it's 12 inches, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I'm good there. So I'm gonna, this is an eight by six piece for this big mat, but I have to cut these green here. And so that one is 10. Ten by eight for that. So I have my black cardstock as the base. I'm trying to dig through where the other paper is. There's my scraps. So to remind myself, okay, I gotta look for the comp, but I use both of those comp papers. So if I want to use a big sheet of this, I'd have to get a whole nother pack out, but I do have these pieces I could use for down here. And then I need those two for that side. We still have this left over. So I'm going to set this up here. You guys won't be able to see it, but I'm, this is my previous page. So I'm going to see what I can do to coordinate it. I could do a bigger section of stars. But I'm going to need two full sheets to be able to do 10 by 8 again. These would work well at the bottom without having to cut anything else. Um, the stars in the middle would work. I have another sheet of that, so I could do the stars here, that one inch there. And then I would need the piece to layer on top, that blue. But let's start with those big pieces first. So 10 by 8, this one is 8 already, so I just need to cut it down to 10. And these down here are one by ten. We can come together. I put two inches off. And that gives me those bottom pieces. I could look for a border sticker and then just the map pieces. So I'll go ahead and hear these and then I can move this around a little bit easier. So this creates my base.
I did that about, I just looked at the bottom one, so it's an inch and a half down from the top. And that keeps this piece about an inch and a half off the bottom. It's most important that they're just kind of the same lined up. Okay, so that creates the base. You can see that. So then I need to choose a color or a print to kind of put down underneath my photos. I do have the black stars which might, that's actually the exact same size. So there you go. I have the black stars that can overlap. This is a four by six. I think I have a four by six left. I can look through my scraps and see. And then this one was the big piece. Six by eight. I don't have any big scraps left, so I'd have to choose another paper or just skip that part. You know, I could just do with what I have. I don't like that comp paper. I probably don't want more gray. I do have um, a little bit more star. So if I wanted to pull the star over here, um, I don't have as much left because I cut, remember I cut strips for the other layout. So how could I adapt it to just use up what I have? I could just choose a, maybe a solid cardstock or something. And this is just a large photo mat. And then I could layer, you know, a piece, this piece kind of underneath it or up here at the top, something like that. And that would pull my print over side by side. And some of these layouts are good for just trying to figure out what to use up that you have left. I don't have any border stickers picked out. The sheet that came with this um, is gold. Has the gold stars, and so I don't think I would probably introduce the gold at this point. Um, so I could pull out just my binder of border stickers and find one or silver and gold if I wanted to work in a border strip. So this is what I have left of silver and gold, and I could use the arrows, or I have this zigzag design, which actually might be okay. I like that. Adds a little bit different um, shape dimension. And look at that. I used up the whole sticker sheet. This was one of, when I had my scrap tech toe at the retreat, one of the boxes was to use up uh, a sticker sheet or an embellishment pack. So there we go. So that would be my base. And then I would add in mats for my photos. And if I wanted to create this little piece up there, I could bring in the polka dot white that I did use on the other one. 
So for this measurement, I have a solid piece that's six inches by two. That's the six by two. And then the inside is about five and a quarter by a little over one and a quarter. I have this piece already cut out from what I did before, which I would just need to trim down a little bit. And then I'd have to decide what I want to put underneath it. Now I could put this underneath it. But I think I might like that to be a bit more layering with my photos. A solid, like the dark gray actually would look nice. I might have to cut up one of my mats because I don't think I have more. So then this is how I could bring this charcoal, especially if I was using charcoal mats. And this was six by two. Yeah, I might use red. Um, but this second layout I anticipate is just going to be photos at the part. And so there won't be any red involved. I'll have to see um, what pictures I get at the actual ceremony. So when I did Emerson's, well, and Jonah's too. So our high school color was red also. And there was so much red in the gowns that I did not actually use red much on the layouts because the red was all already there. I might have less red here if you want to do that. I'm going to just clean up this postage edge from where I cut off that first one. And then it's the perfect width. And I just need to cut that down to fit about five and a quarter. That kind of replicates that. And then if I wanted to get fancy, I could add in a little bit of stitching or with like the metallic silver pens if I wanted to really replicate that. So I think this is how I would leave it right now. I wouldn't adhere these because I have to see what photos I come up with. The intent would be that I'm using probably charcoal, maybe red, depending on what the photos look like for mats, and to pull together this monochromatic um, layout like that. So that's how I would pack it. One other thing I wanted to show, I gotta find, have you guys used the shimmer pens? The shimmer wands. Like I had all three of them in my hand before this started. Oh, I've gotten, oh my gosh, losing everything on my desk. So these are the shimmer pens, glitter wands that we have that um, some of you are more familiar with, you know, from Week of Stella. And we did play with them a little bit at my retreat this weekend. So if I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer into this layout, you know, under here or something like that, then I could. And so what I found by experimenting when you do get one, it's going to have a black ring right here. You will have to take that out. So you have to unscrew it, take off the black ring that will be right there, and then you'll be able to prime it. If you have the clear one, what I found is it's actually the juiciest. I got quite a bit more out of here than the other ones. And once it's primed, you can kind of use it right with the, the fin tip. The more you push on it, it kind of widens out the brush. And you can kind of paint with it. I felt like the clearer one was more obvious than the silver. So this is silver. And I was using these on black paper. And what I figured out later is like it just changes based on kind of the color of your paper. The gold really is a nice gold. You know what the gold one was nice too? Was I punched out um, the gear punch, that new one. 
and he did just a little bit of the edges with the gold and that looks really pretty on there with that one. So for my layout, the clear is almost, I feel like, a more obvious shimmer than the silver. The silver, I think, would show up on something else. So if I use the edge of the paper, I just got to play with it to see, you know, what do you want to add the effect to? And of course, on camera, you're not going to be able to see a whole lot, but the clear really is brighter. The, sh the silver is is more subtle for the pens. And so, you know, maybe I would want to, I could just do little squigglies along the edge of my paper there where they had stitching. And then once it dries, you really see what your true effect is. So if you don't have these, the clear is sold out on Creative Memories. I have some in stock on my website, um, but you can get the silver and gold from Creative Memories. And um, they are fun to have and just to play with and see what you like them on. You know, a little bit goes a long way to start. So just grab a couple of different sheets of paper. Now you could choose something white, um, something dark, and see kind of how they show up based on all of those. So um, thanks for joining me. Hopefully this wasn't too big of a hot mess. It's Kind of a lot of pressure. I thought the graduation would be a fun set to use, and then I realized when you're using kind of monochromatic prints like this, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming in the choices. But the simple page kits are really easy, obviously, to put together as is. And then it's a pretty basic cut you can use for the other ones. And they bring in a lot of pretty papers and colors in the ones so far. So they're only like five plus tax, 550 or something like that includes the sticker. The, the green goodness one is a little bit more. It had a larger sticker, but if you're interested in any of those, of course I have on, on my website, you can get it all at the same time. So hopefully it inspires you a little bit to create your own pages and let the focus really be on the papers and choosing all of those. I feel like I'm a hot mess now. <laughs> you guys see over here, this is where like I have all these different packs trying to, to pick out one end up, but it's been kind of a mess. This week I finally have like been cleaning quite a bit, but the layers are so deep. And so just like the clutter around my house. Um, yesterday, even like in my room, I have a drying rack and my Mexico laundry was still out there. <laughs> like I was putting away the Mexico laundry so I could hang up all the rest of the stuff I've been wearing since then. And then we had kind of a season change which kind of delays laundry a little bit, right? When you go from not needing to wear anything that's dirty and you're wearing warm clothes. So I finally got my suitcase put away. The deeper I found some souvenirs still in my bedroom on the floor. And then last night, um, Emerson came home. So she's been up at Purdue. She's a sophomore and now she'll be a junior. She's home for a month. And then she is going off to California to work at a YMCA camp. So we're excited to have her home for um, a little less than a month. Um, but she'll be here hanging out. Of course, Jonah graduates tomorrow. It's a mystery to all of us what he'll do for the summer and work somewhere. He has his lease through July. That's like, he's <laughs> annoyed that the colleges get you, right? Like, you have to get into these 12 months lease. And like, if I was a landlord, I'd do the same thing. Like, he wants to be stuck with the summer unrented all the time. Um, and then the twins have a few more weeks of school. So, and then we'll be kicking in the summer. Can you believe it? It's crazy. So Summer Scrap will be coming out um, pretty soon. I think registration should be out by next week or so by the time we have Power Hour. We have Power Hour on Tuesday. And again, this, these handouts today and the cutting guide will hit my blog probably today. I already worked on some of this. Um, and then they just want to have photos. That was not going to get photos yet. But when I do finish my grad ones, I'll post them so you can see them. So if you want to post your layouts, I'd love to see what you do, to, especially to hack it. And you can use the scrapbooking ideas and inspiration group. The one, the same one you post for a power hour, post your layouts in there. So you can just hashtag simply scrappy if you want. Um, do you don't need to post in like my shop group or anything like that? The ideas and one is fine to share your layouts with everyone else. So I hope you all have a wonderful Friday afternoon. Hopefully you're not dying of heat already, wherever you are. Hopefully we can extend our spring a little bit longer. Um, next Friday, I will have Simply Scrappy. 
I will be putting together the layouts from the secret box too. So it's not open yet. It doesn't, oh no, I can't do that because it won't really be open because the virtual crop is the evening. I'll have to do that the week after. So two weeks from now will be the secret box layouts. And next week I will let you know. I'll have to rethink. Oh, I do know what next week is. Oh my gosh, I'm a hot mess. Um, next week are the Mother's Day layout. So let me actually flip back down here to my... I really will get my stuff together soon. Well, let me see if I can find them. So did any of you purchase the Mother's Day bundle? It's still available on the website. I find my layouts. It came with the layered dragonflies and the shimmer papers and the 8x8 paper album. I have to dig them out of my case. So what I did is I created 12 by 12 layouts using that collection. And so I will go through. So if you purchase the Mother's Day bundle, it is available right now on Creative Memories. It's also on my website. Um, and then I used a little bit of cardstock and I took apart the 8x8 paper album to create some layouts with those. And so that's what I'm actually doing next week. I already knew this. Mother's Day layouts next week and then we have Secret Box will be the week after that. So if you love the shimmer papers, you love the dragonflies, you love the flowers, but you are not one to make an 8x8 paper album, then join me next Friday. Um, you will need some cardstock. Um, I used blue and dark green, um, but any color that coordinates. And then I use the shimmer papers um, to cut those up and alternate. I'm kind of with those. So that's what we're doing next week um, with the Mother's Day layout. And then in two weeks will be the secret box. And the week after that is to be determined, but I will have Simply Scrappy um, through May. So I will.